Today, we're counting down from biological dead ends to the one perfect organism that guarantees extinction. We aren't ranking these based on how cool the boss fights are. We're running them through a rigorous epidemiological filter using three critical scientific metrics. Transmission rate, or R0, mutation stability, and lethality. You might think the T-virus is the ultimate biological weapon, but the math suggests it's actually a failure. Let's find out which virus actually wins. We're starting at the bottom of the barrel with ranks number 7 and number 6. The progenitor virus and its weaponized successor, the T-virus. This might shock you, considering the T-virus is the face of the franchise, but from a virology standpoint, it's an absolute mess. To understand why, you have to look at what it actually does to the human body. Scientifically, the T-virus functions like a chimera of rabies and Ebola. It attacks the brain's limbic system to induce hyperaggression. That's the rabies part, while simultaneously causing massive cellular necrosis. That's the Ebola part. This combination creates what we call the zombie paradox. A successful virus needs its host to stay alive long enough to spread the infection, but the T-virus causes the host to rot while they're still walking. This necrosis is the virus's undoing. Muscles require structural integrity to function. If the T-virus causes rapid decay, mobility degrades within days. A zombie that can't run can't catch you to bite you. This tanks its transmission rate, or R0. Relying on fluid transfer via biting is incredibly inefficient compared to airborne pathogens like measles. A zombie has to physically overpower every victim. Because they are rotting away, their window of opportunity is biologically tiny. The T-virus burns itself out, killing the host faster than the host can spread it. Moving up to rank number 5, we have the T-Veronica virus. This was Umbrella's attempt to fix the brain rot issue by splicing in queen ant DNA to create a hive mind intelligence. On paper, this solves the tactical problem. Instead of mindless zombies, you get coordinated drones loyal to a leader. We see this with Alexia Ashford controlling her creations. However, T. Veronica fails the mutation stability test harder than any other pathogen on this list. The virus is so aggressive that it causes rapid, uncontrolled mutation that destroys the host's cellular structure almost instantly. The only known way to survive the infection and gain those powers is to undergo cryogenic stasis for 15 years to let the body adapt slowly. As a bioweapon, that is useless. You can't deploy a virus that requires your soldiers to sleep in a freezer for a decade and a half before they're combat ready. While T. Veronica allows for high intelligence and retains motor skills, solving the T. virus's mobility issues, the environmental conditions required to stabilize it, are impossible to replicate on a battlefield. If you inject this into a population, you don't get an army. You get a massive biological sludge that dies before it can take orders. So, we have the T. virus, which creates hosts that rot too fast to be effective vectors, and T. veronica which requires impossible laboratory conditions to function. These are biological dead ends. They destroy their host so thoroughly that the virus essentially commits suicide along with the victim. To find a true extinction-level threat, we need to move away from things that just kill and look at pathogens that refuse to let the host die. This brings us to rank number four, the G-Virus. If the T-virus is defined by death and necrosis, the G-virus is defined by life, uncontrollable, chaotic life. While it creates far more durable monsters than the T-virus, scientifically, the G-virus isn't really an infection in the traditional sense. It functions more like an aggressive, autonomous cancer. William Birkin isn't a zombie. He's a victim of extreme cellular hyperplasia. The G-virus rewrites DNA in real time with zero stability causing constant form changes. Biologically, growing extra limbs and bone plating in hours would require a metabolic rate comparable to a nuclear reactor. This makes the host unstable. The virus rewrites the blueprint faster than the body can build, resulting in that iconic, lopsided asymmetry. It's a biological train wreck that eventually consumes the host entirely, turning them into a mindless blob of meat. The transmission vector is even worse. 
The G-Virus doesn't spread through bites or air. It reproduces by implanting parasitic G embryos into victims. However, we see in Resident Evil 2 that unless the victim is a close genetic match, like a blood relative, the host's body violently rejects the embryo, then rips its way out of the host, killing them instantly, and grows into a separate creature. This gives the G-Virus an effective R0 of nearly zero. You cannot create a pandemic if your virus requires you to track down your own children to successfully reproduce. It is a terrifying localized threat, but a global failure. Climbing to rank number three, we find Albert Wesker's pride and joy, Ouroboros. This pathogen was designed to force human evolution, but it fails our ranking for one specific reason, the filter. Wesker designed Ouroboros to be selective, killing those with inferior DNA while granting superhuman abilities to the worthy. The problem? It rejects almost everyone. Based on the data, Ouroboros kills roughly 90% of the people it touches immediately, and the rejection reaction causes the virus to erupt from the body as those writhing black postules consuming the host's organic matter to fuel its own growth. In virology, this is what we call a self-limiting outbreak. A pathogen that kills its host within seconds of contact has no time to spread. It burns through the available fuel supply, the human population, too quickly to sustain a pandemic. The mechanism here mirrors a cytokine storm in real immunology, where the immune system reacts so violently to an invader that it destroys the body's organs. Earl Burroughs triggers a total systemic collapse in seconds, while the 10% who survive, like Wesker, gain immense power. A 90% mortality rate upon contact makes it a terrible bioweapon for conquest. You don't rule the world with Earl Burroughs. You just turn the population into black sludge and rule over a graveyard. It has high destructive power, but zero sustainability. To find a virus that can actually conquer the world, we need to stop looking at brute force and start looking at something much more insidious. Intelligence. This brings us to rank number two, Las Plagas. To understand why this pathogen is infinitely more dangerous than the T-virus, we have to shift our scientific lens from virology to parasitology. The T-virus is a blunt instrument that destroys the brain. Las Plagas is a surgical tool that hijacks it. In Resident Evil 4, we see the Ganados. These aren't shambling corpses. They speak, they coordinate flanking maneuvers, they use tools, and they drive vehicles. This is because Las Plagas is a macro parasite that attaches itself to the host's central nervous system, specifically the spinal column. In nature, we see this exact behavior in the leucochloridium parasite, which infects snails and overrides their behavior to make them vulnerable to birds. But Las Plagas takes it a step further. It doesn't just control the host, it integrates them into a eusocial hierarchy similar to a hive of bees or a colony of ants. This social stability factor is the game changer. A T-virus zombie is a solitary predator. It doesn't care about other zombies, it just eats. A Las Plagas host, however, retains its higher cognitive functions and muscle memory. From a tactical standpoint, Fighting a zombie is like fighting a wild animal, but fighting the Ganados is like fighting an organized militia that feels no pain. They can wield chainsaws and man turrets. The parasite keeps the host healthy and functional because a healthy host is a better protector for the parasite. It doesn't cause necrosis, it doesn't rot the muscles, it preserves the asset. The only reason Las Plagas isn't ranked number one is its transmission speed. It typically requires direct injection of the egg or ingestion, which is slower than an airborne virus. However, the survival rate of the pathogen itself is nearly 100% because it turns the host into a willing defender rather than a rotting corpse. We also have to give honorable mention here to Mutamycete, or the mold, from Resident Evil 7 and Village. While Las Plagas is parasitic, the mold is fungal. Scientifically, this is the most fascinating concept in the series because it mimics real-world mycorrhizal networks. In our forests, trees are connected by vast underground fungal webs called the wood wide web. These fungi transfer nutrients and chemical signals between trees. The mold weaponizes this concept. It creates a hive mind where every infected host is mentally connected to the central fungal colony, the megamycete. 
This allows for instant coordination across miles. It can even store the genetic and memory data of the deceased, effectively acting as a biological hard drive. The mold is terrifying because it is nearly indestructible. Fungal spores are notoriously difficult to kill and can survive in extreme environments for decades. However, it misses the top spot because of its environmental dependency. The mold tends to be territorial, rooting itself in a specific location to create a biome, rather than sweeping across the globe in a rapid wave. It plays the long game, slowly converting an area, whereas our number one pick is designed to burn the world down in a weekend. We have finally arrived at rank number one, the C-Virus. If you skipped Resident Evil 6, you might have missed this, but scientifically, the C-Virus is the masterpiece of bioterrorism. It is a genomic chimera engineered by combining the T. Veronica virus with the G virus, specifically to strip away their flaws and retain their strengths. Remember the problems we listed earlier? The T virus rots the host, the G virus is too unstable, T. Veronica requires 15 years of cryostasis. The C virus solves all of this. It takes the ant queen intelligence of T. Veronica and stabilizes it, removing the need for freezing. Then it takes the aggressive mutation capability of the G-Virus, but adds a genetic stop code that prevents the host from degrading into a pile of meat. The result is the Javo. These are the soldiers that retain human intelligence, can use automatic weapons, and pilot helicopters. But unlike Las Plagas hosts, Javo have reactive mutation. If you shoot a Javo in the arm, the C-Virus reacts to the trauma by instantly mutating the arm into a shielded claw or a tentacle. It effectively weaponizes the host's own healing factor. Instead of the host dying from damage, the host becomes more dangerous the more you hurt it. But the real reason the C-Virus takes the number one spot is its transmission rate. This is the only virus in the franchise that successfully achieves aerosolization on a tactical scale. In the game, we see a B.O.W. called Lepotitsa. This creature acts as a mobile biological factory it has massive pores on its back that expel gas containing a high concentration of the C virus. When released in a confined space, like the cathedral in Resident Evil 6, the infection rate is 100%. Everyone breathing the air turns within seconds. This changes the R0 map completely. We aren't talking about an R0 of 2 or 3 via biting. We're looking at measles level numbers, 12 to 18. A single Lepotitsa dropped into Times Square wouldn't just cause an outbreak, it would convert Midtown Manhattan in under an hour. Furthermore, the C-Virus has a secondary form of transmission. If injected, the host can enter a chrysalid state, forming a hard cocoon. This protects the virus while it radically restructures the host's DNA, birthing a completely new organism tailored to the environment. This is the ultimate biological adaptability. So, let's look at the scoreboard. Does it cause necrosis? No, it enhances the host. Does it rely on inefficient biting? No, it can be airborne. Is it unstable? No, it produces intelligent, combat-capable soldiers. The C-Virus is the only pathogen in the franchise that ticks every single box for a global extinction event. It combines the intelligence of the parasites, the mutation power of the G-Virus, and the transmission speed of an airborne flu. The T-Virus might be the most famous, but if the C-Virus was released in the real world, there would be no survivors left to make a sequel about. It is, scientifically speaking, the perfect end of the world. While the T-Virus gets all the fame, the C-Virus brings actual extinction. Real evolution favors survival and spread, not just mindless destruction, making the calculated stability of these later viruses the true nightmare scenario. Which of these biological horrors do you honestly think you could actually survive? Let us know in the comments below. If you want more scientific breakdowns of your favorite video games, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now.